The internet is highly, highly centralized. You know, I think it's it's fairly common knowledge that Amazon, Microsoft, and Google dominate the cloud market, but one organization controls all domain names, all of them. Unfortunately, there are some decentralized solutions out there, and if one of them is adopted, not only will it solve a major problem with the internet as it is, but those who adopt that protocol early can do extremely well. I'm really excited about this one. Welcome to DeFi Now, I'm Josh Cross, and if you like ad-free crypto content, then make sure to subscribe down there with the bell notification so you don't miss out on all the great info. As always, this is not financial advice or an endorsement. I am not a financial advisor, and even if I was, I don't think YouTube should be anyone's only source of information. And that's what this is, just some information that I've personally gathered that I think is important and accurate, but it's up to you to double check the accuracy of this video and do your own research before taking any action. Now let's jump in. I know domain names aren't all that exciting to talk about, but they are super, super important to anyone using the internet. So I promise to keep this short and simplified and just focus on what's relevant here. I don't like to give any predictions, but if a blockchain based DNS protocol is adopted globally, we could be talking about life changing gains in the long term. Now let's first get on the same page by understanding that a domain name consists of three parts. The host name, which here is www, the second level domain, which is YouTube, and the top level domain, which is com. Second level domains can be anything that the top level domain administrator allows. And then top level domains are either generic, which is .com, .net, .edu, or their country code top level domains, .jp for Japan, .de for Germany. Now anyone can easily rent a subdomain if it's available. And notice that I said rent and not buy because you can't actually own them. You can only rent them from the top level domain administrator or registrar, and they can be taken from you. But top level domains are another story because you can't buy them and you can't rent them. Top level domains are controlled by ICANN, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. ICANN determines when new top level domains are created and who are the registers of them and so on. Now, on the one hand, it's good that ICANN is a nonprofit organization and it's good that they're relatively democratic in their approach. However, they are still a middleman. They're still a central point of failure. They can be attacked. They can be corrupted. They can be taken down. They are subject to pressure from governments. You know, most of the time when a website is taken down, it's because some government put pressure on ICANN or one of the registers below it. So even if they have the best of intentions, and even though it's worked so far for the most part, I still think all core infrastructure for the internet should be decentralized, transparent, censorship resistant, and in the case of domain names, it should also be permissionless, open for everyone. Now let's look at the blockchain-based alternatives. The first blockchain-based domain names that I heard of came from Unstoppable Domains. Now in this case, you can't own any top-level domains, only second-level domains in the form of an NFT. But a three-letter second-level domain is between $2,500 and $250,000. I think those prices are completely asinine for what they offer. Unstoppable Domains is not transparent about how they work. This is a centralized company who takes in the sale of these domains as revenue, as far as I've been able to tell. It's not a decentralized network. They don't have a token. They, these profits aren't going to stakers, so you can't run a node. They're just a version of GoDaddy that sells second level domains as NFTs. I mean, you can, you can connect your wallets to your .crypto address, so that's nice. Their servers are apparently on IPFS, so there's some decentralization there, and your domains are in your wallet, so they shouldn't be able to take them from you, although they could probably stop them from working. But for a centralized for-profit company, they do make a lot of talk about decentralization. Anyway, I don't have anything necessarily against unstoppable domains, but I'm also not really a fan. However, I do like these other three protocols I'll cover. Let's look at the one with the most similarities to unstoppable domains, and that's ENS. The Ethereum name system, or ENS, is the protocol responsible for the .eth domains that we see everywhere. Like unstoppable domains, you can only buy second level domains here under the .eth top level domain. ENS has stated that they don't plan to offer any other TLDs because they want to work alongside ICANN, and they do make some fair points as to why that is, and I'll link that article in the description so you can check it out. However, and this is important, as I said earlier, there are generic TLDs and then there are country code TLDs in the current system. 
Each country has a two-letter country code reserved for them by ICANN. These are .us, .in, but each country also has a three-letter country code reserved for them. .usa for here, SLV for El Salvador, and maybe you can see where I'm going with this, ETH for Ethiopia. Now, I want to stress that this could be a big deal or could not be. Maybe they will claim it and maybe they won't. But I have a hard time thinking they won't, given how valuable .eth is already and how fast it's been growing. So I expect that sometime in the future, Ethiopia will claim it, and the ENS DAO will have to buy rights to the .eth TLD from them, and who knows how that plays out. Now, aside from that point, I do actually really like ENS. I like that their token was airdropped to domain holders. Their domains are nowhere near as expensive as unstoppable domains. They are transparent about how their protocol works and they have a functioning DAO already. I do expect ENS to succeed. They're already really successful, but they're essentially a blockchain-based GoDaddy or Namecheap. Same with unstoppable domains, and I still don't think it solves the core issue of, of centralization in internet names. So let's look at the next protocol, which takes things to a whole new level. Handshake was the first blockchain solution to internet names that really impressed me. It was founded by some of the best minds in the industry, it's a fork of Bitcoin, so they have their own proof-of-work blockchain that these run on. They raised $10.2 million from the very top VCs like A16Z, Pantera, Sequoia, Draper Associates, and then they took the entirety of the money they raised and put it towards free and open-source software organizations. These are organizations like Mozilla Foundation, Wikipedia, Arch Linux, the Tor Project. I think this was an absolutely brilliant move, and I really respect it. Now, Handshake... It's taking organizations who already share the vision of a free and open internet and incentivizing them to build it on their blockchain. That is awesome. Handshake is a decentralized, permissionless, experimental blockchain that very well could fix the centralization of names on the internet. It's open source and anyone can run a node or mine on the network. You can buy any available top level domains on it and they reserve the existing ICANN domains so people with existing websites can still claim them on Handshake, which should help with adoption. But I do still have some issues with it. First, because they are their own blockchain, they are only as secure as their hash power, and that makes them vulnerable to a 51% attack that could be done to censor websites or double spend their token. I cannot stress enough how problematic it would be if Handshake was adopted, and then they had a 51% attack which stopped the network or stopped certain websites that would completely defeat the argument of why it's needed. And to me, that's a deal breaker because I don't think their network will ever be as secure as Ethereum. Then there's the question of what happens in the event of a hard fork like Bitcoin did multiple times or how expensive it will become as it gains adoption. It's also a hassle to get a domain name because there's an auction process that takes about two weeks. Now, as someone who has purchased several domains in the current system where you can easily get any that are available, I think it's a hard sell to get people behind the auction system, even if they are top level domains, which are obviously much better than second level domains when it comes to ownership. Then there's also the issue of adoption. Having their own blockchain means every wallet has to manually add it. It doesn't trade on any decentralized exchange and it adds complexity for users. I've been a fan of Handshake for over a year, but I've never owned any HNS coins because I don't trust any of the centralized exchanges it's traded on. If it were built on Ethereum, they could leverage Ethereum security and they could access all the wallets, DEXs, marketplaces, and users already on Ethereum. And that's what this last solution does. Decentraweb takes the concepts that Handshake is building on their Bitcoin fork and is doing it on Ethereum instead. So you can buy any top-level domain that is available and then mint any second-level domain on top of it very easily. They reserved all the ICANN, ENS, and Unstoppable domains. So even if ENS or Unstoppable domains are successful, they could still work alongside DecentraWeb. Each top-level domain is only $100 if paid in ETH and only $50 if paid in DWEB tokens, regardless of the length. Now, I've already purchased the .defynow and .dfn top-level domains, and we've got some cool plans for those in the long term. I will say that right now, in this kind of bearish market that we're in, the gas prices are low, and if you want to get a top-level domain, I think now is a great time, while wow, that cost is low. Speaking of the DWeb token, they launched this token back in October after a standard raise with VCs and all that. Here's the token distribution and vesting schedule. Feel free to pause the video to take a look, but I'm not going to go through all of this. The team behind DecentraWeb 
is stellar, and there are some big announcements coming up as far as the team goes. I've had multiple calls with them, and they've been fantastic to work with. They first reached out to me to do some sponsor videos, but after talking with them, we decided the best way to go forward is for me to join the team as an education advisor and help educate the community on how this all works and why it's so important. So for transparency, you should know that as an advisor, I will get tokens, which are vested over two years as payment for my services. I'll leave it at that for now. I'm stoked to be on the team and working on one of the most important use cases for the blockchain. But please don't take any of this as financial advice, of course. There's still a lot of uncertainty in the markets, and I have no idea where things are going to go in the short term. This is very much a long-term play for me. I think it's likely that most people won't care about a decentralized DNS, and there won't be a whole lot of adoption until something happens to show the world the importance of it. Some big failure due to the centralized nature of ICANN or something like that. And then we could see some big fireworks in this space. So I, I wouldn't be surprised to see no adoption and then all the adoption. But what do you think? Sound off your thoughts in the comments below. If you made it this far, you probably learned something valuable and a thumbs up down there and a comment is a great way to let me know. Thanks so much for watching and keep exploring.